Hello everyone, in this uh, video we're going to be talking about how to determine if a given compound or if a given salt is going to be acidic, basic, or neutral when dissolved in water. It's an, a very important question and a lot of times students really can't get, uh, really can't figure out if a given salt is going to be acidic, basic, or neutral. And there are some steps to follow and if you understand those steps, if you follow those steps, you should be able to figure out the bottom line is you're going to have to look at your cation and you're going to have to look at your anions one by one in order to figure out if the cation is capable of making an acidic solution or if the anion is capable of making an basic solution. If both cannot make acidic or basic solution, then your overall solution is going to be neutral. And if one is making acidic, then it would be an acid. If the anions making the basic solution it would be in a basic. So let's let's look at some of these rules here. So let's say let's talk about the cations and the anions that will not make any acidic or basic solution. And uh, the, a good example of cations is going to be whenever you're looking at the counter ions of your strong bases. So what are your strong bases out there? And there are not that many strong bases that you guys talked about. And obviously your uh, alkali metal hydroxides is a, a one list where I can talk about like LiOH or KOH and if I go down all the way to that uh, line uh, until I get FROH and then maybe another one I can talk about is BaOH2 and uh, calcium hydroxide. Uh, so if you see the cations of those strong bases and obviously those cations would be in the form of salt, like I could have a lithium bromide, a lithium chloride, or lithium carbonate, or anything like that. But as soon as you see those cations like Li+, plus, or you see in a K+, plus in the solution, or even the Fr+, uh, plus, or I can talk about this Ba2+, plus, all these guys are going to be pH neutral. They're not going to be doing anything. So that's the very first thing you're going to be looking into. Do you have the cation that's going to be coming from, that's going to be the counter ion of your strong base that we have listed here? And if it is, that cation is going to be the pH neutral once it's going to be dissolved in the water. Now that anion, the counter anion of that, you don't know whether it's going to be pH neutral or not, but right now we just focused on the cation. Now, let's talk about what type of anions are going to be the pH neutral that's going to be the conjugate bases of your strong acids. So how many strong acids that we have really have talked about? There are only six strong acids that you really talked about. One of them being uh, obviously the HCl, you got the HBr, HI, and then we have three oxy acids that's going to be strong acids, HNO3, we got uh, H2SO4, and then we have HClO4. So as soon as you see these anions like uh, Cl- minus, Br minus or I minus or like NO3 1 minus, um, SO4 2 minus, and ClO4 1 minus, those anions would be your pH neutral. Okay, so that's going to be your one type where you're going to be looking at where the cation is coming from and where the anion is coming from. Now let's talk about the cases where the anion of a salt is going to be acting as in a base and that's going to be making the basic solution. And the cations in that particular case are going to be your pH neutral. In those cases, your anions are going to be the conjugate bases of weak acids. So what are the weak acids we really have out there? Um, you know, there are tons of different weak acids, like acidic acids, uh, hydrochloric acid, carbonic acids. All those guys are going to be your weak acid. So if you see a anion coming from those weak acids, then it's going to be making in a basic solution. Like, let me take an example here. Suppose I got NaF. Now, when I break this down into uh, the ions, I know I got Na plus and F minus. So then you go back and focus on what's really going on with my Na. So remember your Na is going to be the counter ion of your strong base, like we have talked about earlier. If you have a cation, that's going to be the counter ion of strong base. That's going to be your pH neutral. So this Na is going to be actually neutral. It's not going to be doing anything. 
But when I look at this F minus, F minus is not going to be in the list of those anions that are coming from strong acids, but rather F minus is going to be the conjugate base of HF, which is a weak acid. So since it's a weak acid's conjugate base, it's going to have some basic properties. So as a result, it's going to be making a basic solution. So this, uh, when you dissolve the NaF in water, it's going to be basic in nature. So that's how you're going to be looking at your uh, anion in the salt. Let's talk about when you have the cation that's going to be acting as an acid and your anions are going to be the pH neutral. Well, those are typically going to be the opposite. Like in the previous case, we talked about the anions of, are, are, those are going to be the conjugate bases of weak acid. But here, they are going to be the conjugate acids of weak bases. That's one category. The other category you want to make sure you know is the small, highly charged metal ions. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But your most common conjugate acids of the weak acids, weak bases would be your ammonium. So like NH4, suppose I got NH4 uh, plus. So I could write that NH4 plus in the form of salt as NH4Cl or you know NH4Br. So remember this Cl minus, this Br uh, and Cl minus and Br minus is going to be coming from your uh, they are going to be the anions of your strong bases. So they're not going to be doing anything to the solution. They are going to be pH neutral. But this NH4+, plus, it's going to be your conjugate acid of a weak base ammonia. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down on the side here. So that's going to be our base here. So since it's the conjugate acid of the weak base, this is going to be making an acidic solution. The other common examples are going to be any derivatives of ammonia. Basically, I can have in a primary amine, secondary amines. All their salts are going to be acidic in nature. And then, in addition to that, you also want to worry about some small, highly charged metal cations. I can I can talk about something like Al three plus. That's a loose acid. I can talk about Fe three plus. The Al3 plus and Fe3 plus, those are going to be your most common highly charged metal cation, metal ions that you're going to be seeing in this class and also in, when you take organic chemistry. And their solutions are going to be acidic. And also keep in mind, those uh, metal cations also act as your least acid. So that kind of gives it away that they are going to be making an uh, acidic solution in when they are dissolved in water. So we talked about so far how you can kind of ignore one or the other and focus on only one of them when you're trying to determine the pH. Like in this second case, we were focused on the anions and we said the cation is going to be pH neutral. But then in this third case, we said we focused on the cations and your anions were pH neutral. But what if you get run into a situation where both can act as some sort of acid or base? And in that case, your relative strength is going to matter. Let me take an example. So suppose I have something like NH or NO2, so that's ammonium nitrite. And now when I go ahead and break this down into the ions here, so I know this is going to make NH4 plus, and this is going to make NO2 one minus. So clearly we know this is going to be your conjugate acid of a weak base. So it's going to have some acidic strength here. And what about this NO2 one minus? Right? Don't confuse the NO2 one minus with this NO3 one minus we have written earlier. NO3 minus, NO3 one minus is the conjugate base of a strong acid, so that would be the pH neutral. But this NO2 one minus is going to be the conjugate uh, base of a weak acid, which is HNO2 or nitrous acid. So in this case, they both have the potential to kind of uh, act as your acid and base. So in that case, your relative strength is going to be matter uh, will matter the most. So what you're going to be doing here, you're going to be looking at the Ka of this acid and the Kb of this base here, and whoever is bigger kind of dominates. So let's suppose if the Ka was bigger than the Kb here, then the solution would have been acidic. And if the Kb was bigger here than the Ka, 
then your solution would have been basic. So at that point, they would actually tell you what those Ka and the Kbs are for those particular ions. So that's how you're going to be looking at uh, when you have a combination of both. So let's look at some of these examples I have written down here. So suppose I got this uh, uh, Ba, Br2. So always kind of figure out what their uh, ions are. So Ba is going to be 2 plus and the Br is going to be Br1 minus. And you can certainly write down the equation if you want, but you want to be able to quickly do those by just writing the cation and the anion. So remember the barium 2 plus, if I go back here, was in the list of uh, the cation of the uh, counter ion of the strong bases, the barium hydroxide. So that's going to be pH neutral. What about the Br minus? Well, Br minus is a conjugate base of strong acid HBr. So that one is going to be pH neutral as well. So this overall solution is going to be neutral. So that's how you're going to be looking at those. What about this NH4Cl? Well, remember the NH4, when you break those into ions, it's going to be NH4 plus and it's going to be Cl minus. So NH4 plus obviously is going to be your um, conjugate acid of a weak base. So that's going to be producing an acidic pH. So that's going to be acidic in nature. And then you also got to look at the Cl minus there. The Cl minus is going to be your uh, conjugate base of strong acid HCl. So that's going to be pH neutral. So obviously, you know, your acidic kind of wins over the neutral here. So your overall solution is going to be acidic at the end of the day. Okay, what about this NaF? So in NaF, you have Na plus and F minus. So Na is going to be your counter ion of strong base like NaOH. So that's going to be pH neutral. And your F minus is going to be the conjugate base of weak acid HF. So this is going to be actually basic. This is going to be producing basic solution. So at the end of the day, overall, this solution is going to be basic. Uh, what about AI, ALI3? So when I break this into ions, suppose, so this is going to be Al3+, plus, and it's going to be I minus. Obviously, three of the I minus is there. But remember, your I minus is going to be the conjugate base of strong acid HI. So as a result, this one would be the pH neutral. But what about this Al3 plus? Well, if we go back here and say that, uh, you know, small, highly charged metal ions like aluminum 3 plus, iron 3 plus, those are the most commonly seen. Uh, they are going to be your acidic. They're, they're going to be producing an acidic pH. Um, that's going to be acidic. So overall, your solution is going to be acidic in nature. Okay, let's go back to this question that we actually took the example when we were doing earlier. So we have NH4 plus here, and we got the NO2 1 minus here. And then, well, we know this has the potential to produce an acidic solution, and the NO2 1 minus is going to have the potential to produce basic solution. But then at the end of the day, who is going to win? So let's look at their Ka values. The Ka of this NH4 plus is about 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10. So the Kb of this NO2 one minus can be calculated when you uh, know the Ka of HNO2. And the Kb comes out to be for this one, or this you might be just given the Kb of that. It's going to be 2.5 times 10 to the minus 11. Or you may be just given the Ka of HNO2. So the Ka of HNO2 in this particular case is going to be 4 times 10 to the minus 4 approximate. And then from there, you can calculate the Kb by dividing it by, from, uh, by 10 to the minus 14. So you can clearly see that the Kb is actually going to be less in uh, magnitude. This is going to be larger. So since this is larger, this solution is going to be acidic in uh, overall at the end of the day. A fun fact about this ammonium nitride is not very stable actually in acidic condition. It could explode. So a lot of time when you have to store this in water, you would have to add some ammonia in there to kind of make it a little bit basic so that it's uh, going to be stable. At lower pH, it's not going to be very stable. 
All right, so this is how you're going to be determining the pH or the solution acidity when you have when you're looking at the cations and the anions separate. Uh, if you have any questions on any of those, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.